Meet Jake, three years carnivore. He actually lost 60 pounds, reversed his diabetes. Blood pressure is perfect. LDL cholesterol, low 115. His doctor said he was the healthiest patient in the practice. Heart attack at age 42. Same week, his doctor congratulated him on his perfect blood work. See, this test, the one 90% of carnivores never get, would have predicted it. Here's why your ribeye isn't killing you, but your ignorance about particle count might be. So let me destroy the biggest myth in the carnivore space right now. Meat raises cholesterol, saturated fat clogs arteries, carnivores die of heart disease. All of these miss the point completely. Framingham offspring, 3000 plus people, 15 years, showed this. People with identical LDL cholesterol had up to five-fold differences in heart attacks depending on particle count. So it's not about cholesterol content, it's about particle count. Think about it like this. You eat a pound of ribeye, your body packages the resulting lipids into particles for transport. Some people make fewer, larger particles. Others make more, smaller particles. Same cholesterol, different particle count. Completely different cardiovascular risk. So this explains why some carnivores thrive with perfect cardiovascular health while others eating the exact same foods develop heart disease. The Copenhagen study tracked 108,000 people for 35 years. Here's what they found about particle count. High ApoB, normal LDL, three to four times higher heart attack risk. Normal ApoB, high LDL, no added risk. Your cholesterol number doesn't matter. Your particle count does. I've tested over 210 carnivores personally. Here's what I found. 30% have elevated ApoB despite perfect LDL cholesterol. 15% have dangerous particle counts while celebrating their lipid improvements. And the ones who get heart attacks, almost all had high ApoB nobody tested. So here's a case anonymized. One long-term carnivore influencer dropped LDL from 200 to 120, but never measured ApoB. Later, lab showed ApoB at 145. She did suffer a sudden heart attack in her late 30s. Community called her LDL a success, but ApoB told the real story. So here's what's actually happening biochemically that the carnivore gurus won't tell you. About 25% of people have a genetic variance that caused them to produce more smaller LDL particles when they eat high amounts of saturated fats. Now these people, the ApoE4 carriers, certain LDLR variants, they respond differently to the carnivore diet. Their liver sees the increased cholesterol intake and cranks out more particles to transport it. Each particle carries less cholesterol, but there are way more of them. So their LDL cholesterol looks fine or even improves, but their ApoB skyrockets. This isn't rare. In my carnivore testing database, one in four long-term carnivores has ApoB over 120. One in 10 has ApoB over 140, extreme risk territory. And most have no idea because they're only testing basic lipids. And here's the uncomfortable truth. The carnivore community's obsession with LDL cholesterol being irrelevant has created a blind spot that's literally killing people. Here's exactly what every carnivore needs to test and why most carnivore-friendly doctors are failing to do so. Essential testing. ApoB, particle count, goal under 80, ideally under 60. LP small a, genetic risk, 20% of population are affected. LDLP via NMR confirms particle number. Oxidized LDL, inflammatory damage marker, and CAC score, if over 40, actual artery damage. Test timeline, baseline before starting carnivore, three months after starting when lipids typically spike, and every six months thereafter. 
but immediately a family history of early heart disease. But Dave Feldelman says cholesterol doesn't matter. Well, Dave's lean mass hyperresponder theory applies to maybe 5% of carnivores. The other 95% are actually flying blind. But the Inuit ate high fat and didn't get heart disease. The Inuit had massive genetic adaptations to high fat diets. You probably don't. Here's how to stay carnivore and protect your cardiovascular system as I have for the past 11 years. Step one, get the right tests. Don't trust carnivore friendly doctors who only order basic lipids. Step two, if ApoB is elevated, implement the carnivore compatible fixes. Berberine 500 milligrams twice daily doesn't interfere with ketosis. Omega-3 3 to 4 grams EPA and DHA daily. Magnesium glycinate or torate or malate of 400 milligrams minimum. You should be taking this anyway. Electrolyte optimization, sodium potassium balance. Your second tier, if ApoB is still high, Reduce saturated fat temporary. Yes, I said it and I did it. Increase monounsaturated fats from duck fat. Beef tail actually keeps everything quite neutral. And consider carb refeeds at least one time weekly. Now track these every six to eight weeks. ApoB is your main target. Triglycerides should be under 100 on carnivore. HDL particle count, not just HDL cholesterol. Inflammatory markers such as HSCRP and interleukin-6. And here's what nobody wants to hear. If your ApoB stays above 120 despite optimization, you might need to modify your approach. So some people simply cannot do pure carnivore long term without cardiovascular consequences. So let me be brutally honest about something the carnivore community doesn't want to discuss. Not everyone is genetically suited for long-term carnivore eating. The people who thrive on carnivore typically have ApoE variants, E2, E3, good LDL-R function, efficient cholesterol clearance mechanisms, strong antioxidant systems. But 25 to 30% of the population has genetic variants that make them vulnerable. ApoE4 carriers, 25% of people, certain PCSK9 variants, impaired cholesterol reverse transport. And I have them myself, but I still consume two pounds of meat and I can teach you how. I've worked with carnivores who had to choose between their identity and their cardiovascular health. And the smart ones choose health. They modify their approach with 80-20 carnivore instead of 100%, include some low toxin plants, focus on metabolic health markers, not dietary purity. But keep in mind, being 75% or higher meat eater, you are still being considered carnivore if you want that identity. Your diet shouldn't be a religion. If the labs show cardiovascular risk, adjust the approach. Here are real results from carnivores who caught this early. Mark, ApoB 156 after two years carnivore, added berberine, bergamot, and omega-3. Six months later, ApoB dropped to 89. Lisa, ApoB 134, LP small a 78, high genetic risk, modified to include some plants, added target supplements. ApoB now is actually 76. But here are the warnings. Tom ignored elevated ApoB because his LDL cholesterol was fine. Stents at age 44. Rachel trusted carnivore influencer advice over lab results. Heart attack at 39. The carnivore community's dismissal of these markers is creating casualties. The carnivores who stay healthy long term, they test. They monitor. They adjust when needed. They're not married to dietary dogma. They're married to optimal health. So here's your assignment. If you've been carnivore for more than three months and haven't tested ApoB and LP small a, you're playing Russian roulette with your cardiovascular health. 
just to be on the safe freaking side tomorrow call your doctor's office request apoB LP small a and LDLP testing if they refuse pay out of pockets only about 150 to 100 dollars start these immediately omega-3 2 grams daily minimum magnesium 400 milligrams glycinate or other forms track your energy and recovery early cardiovascular warning signs get your numbers face the reality adjust if needed LDL clearance and LDL receptors play a huge role in how you respond to carnivore eating and since we each have unique genetic variations in these pathways your carnivore diet might be perfect for your weight and metabolic health but terrible for your cardiovascular system so drop your ApoB and LP small a numbers below let's see who's actually protecting their heart and who's trusting carnivore dogma over medical reality and if you want to know how I maintained 11 years of carnivore eating while managing my own LP small a genetics and ApoB optimization reach out let's have a chat or better yet I can create a personalized guide based on your specific genetic and metabolic profile as well you ain't free at least to survive they feed disease keep dreams deprived clock in decay don't misbehave just be a number not a wave doctor says stress hands me a script Side effects longer than the work shift Foods, a weapon, news is a sedative Truth got buried, profits the relative Thinkers, question workers comply Guess which one they fund Don't misbehave, just be a number, not a wave